Hey there. So this coming up Sunday, we are doing a Super Bowl baptism Sunday, Super Baptism Sunday. And a lot of people are getting baptized and um, I'm getting to baptize one of them. It was going to be two, but his dad's going to do it. And I'm so very grateful. And so I was talking to several people about this and how happy I am about it. And so they asked a lot of questions. And because they asked these questions, I was like, I guess this isn't common knowledge. So I'm going to share this with you. Okay. So a big question I get asked is, do you have to like go to some special class to get baptized? And another question I get asked is, do you have to be ordained or something to baptize somebody else? Let me answer this for you really quickly. The Great Commission, which is what Jesus said to his followers right before he was ascended, ascended back into heaven, is go into all the world um, and proclaim the gospel, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all my commands. That's the Great Commission. We are supposed to go to everywhere as believers, and we are supposed to share the gospel and baptize them and teach them to obey God. Okay? Pretty simple. Pretty simple thing. Now, let's think about some people who baptize other people. John the Baptist was not ordained. He was not a priest or a pastor or any other thing. He wore camel hair and he ate locust and honey. That's what it says. He lived out in the desert. And he baptized so many people that he was called John the Baptist. He even baptized Jesus. Okay? No special training. And let me tell you what happened. When these people came, he didn't say, uh, sign up online and we're going to have you take a class for the next six weeks to make sure that you're good with this and make sure that you really understand what's going on here. He simply said, repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. You want to come? Come repent. I am baptizing you with water. There's somebody coming after me, Jesus, that will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. This is a sign of repentance. This is a public display of your faith in Jesus. This is very important to a person. I know it was to me because it marks a time when you go, I was going in this direction and I've repented of that. And now I'm going in another direction. And I just want to tell you real quick what happened when I got baptized. Okay, so I went to a church. I'm going to fast forward through this real quick. And I had long hair. I was wearing an Iron Maiden shirt. I was 45 minutes late. I was barefoot. It was a church I didn't know anybody. And I was emaciated from drugs. And the pastor welcomed me into his church, even though all that was true. Rewound and told me his whole sermon. And then asked if anybody needed prayer. And when I came up, for prayer, he said, what can I do for you? And I said, I think I want to be baptized. And he said, and why is that? I'm like, because I'm a sinner. And I cried. And he prayed with me. And he turned me around and he said, all the angels in heaven rejoice when even one sinner comes to repentance. And I can hear them shouting for joy for this young man right now. Come and welcome him into the family of God. And then they did. Everybody came and they hugged me and they shook my hand and they treated me like a person. And they welcomed me into the family of God. No questions asked. No classes. No, are you good enough? None of us are good enough. None of us are good enough, okay? The fact that we think that we're good enough proves that we don't even understand how the gospel works. None of us are good enough. And the following week, you know, I, I told my family, I said, hey, because I was a runaway at the time. So I told my mom, and I was living in Texas, and she lived in North Carolina, I'm going to get baptized next Sunday. And she was like, I'm going to come down to watch it. I'm like, it's not that big of a deal. She goes, yes. It is a big deal. Yes, it is. We've been praying for you for a long time. There's a lot of people in the church that are praying for you. And yes, this is a big deal. And I will fly across the country. Me and your brothers and sisters will fly across the country and watch you get baptized to stand beside you and to encourage you. And I was like, well, you don't have to. It's not that big of a deal. And I didn't realize at the time what a big deal it was, that the entire trajectory of my life was about to change, that I was going in one direction which was straight to hell. And that I made what I thought was a minor adjustment in my life and launched me in the other direction. And let me just tell you what happened. It was in a stock tank, okay? Uh, at our church, we have a baptismal tank <laughs> and um, you know it's clean and safe and the right temperature and all those things. I went into a stock tank, which means like a, like a pond. And I looked and there were stickers on the ground and I was like, there's probably snakes in that lake. Because uh, it wasn't a big lake. It was like a little little one. I was like, I would rather die in there 
than keep living the way that I'm living. That's how serious this is to me. And so I went down to the water and I said, John Tonell, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I went down and I'm going to tell you, before this happened, I felt disgusting. Like head to toe, in my soul, down to my core. I knew what I was and I was a sinner and I knew it and I was just drenched in it. Okay. I could feel it all over me. There was no question to me. Like I knew what I was. And I went down into the water and I came back up. Not everybody has this experience, but I came back up and I felt like all that stuff stayed in the water. I felt clean for the first time in my life. And the world looked different to me. The world, it was like I was born again. It was like I wasn't in the same place anymore. My eyes were finally opened and I had the Spirit of God inside of me. And I was so very grateful. Anyway, to answer your, your other question, you know, do you have to take any kind of class or anything to get baptized? Absolutely not. You have to be willing. And I think that I trust that God does the rest of the work. I trust that he called you to come get baptized in the first place. And if you're asking me to baptize you, I 100% will. No questions asked. Now, if you want to talk about it, I do. I'll talk to you all as long as you want to. The next thing is, do you have to be a pastor or something like that to baptize somebody? Absolutely not. Any believer can baptize anybody else. That's the way that it works. If you look at other people that baptize people, there's the story of Philip, okay? Philip is walking along, and he feels in his spirit that God is telling him, go stand near this chariot. And so there was an Ethiopian, and he was riding on a chariot. He was a high-up official, and he's reading the scroll of Isaiah. Maybe like this, I don't mean like this. And he looks perplexed, and he happens to look over, and Philip's there. And he said, do you know what this means? And he goes, as a matter of fact, I do. And he gets on the chariot, and they're riding along, and he explains it. He says, what this is talking about is Jesus. And this is what happened. He was crucified. He died. He rose again from the dead, and that is to save you from your sins, and you need to be baptized and born again. And this, this official says, there's water right there. What's stopping us from getting baptized right now? Is there any reason why I can't just go get baptized in that water? I said, no, there's not. I think that there are people that are like, I want to say yes to Jesus. How do I say yes to Jesus? And so I'm telling you right now. You want to know? This is how to do it. And he stopped the chariot. He had the people stop the chariot. And he got everybody out. And he got in the water. And he baptized them. And this is what happened in that particular situation. Then Philip disappeared. He was taken away in the spirit to somewhere else. So this Ethiopian is reading this thing. There is somebody that has the answer for him. He says, I want to do this. He gets baptized. And the guy disappears. That is... Not exactly, but kind of how mine went. And I'm so very grateful for that. So how do we get baptized? How do we say yes to Jesus? First of all, repent of your sin. They, the Bible says, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus, that you, in Jesus, right? That you will be saved. And then the first thing he says is, go and be baptized. And so do that. Find somebody that will baptize you. If nobody else will, I will. I, a couple months back, I drove four hours to go baptize two people because they asked me to. I want to help you get to heaven. <laughs> I want to be with you forever, and I want to look at you and go, I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that I got to play a part in that. I love you guys. Have a good night.